So, good afternoon all. Uh, very glad to be here um, speaking here with a uh, lot of technologist, uh, developer, researcher, implementation um, experts. Um, my topic is uh, industrial automation, robotics and digitalization. So, I come from ABB. Uh, thanks to my previous speakers. So, uh, in a way he has already put the context of uh, fourth industrial revolution. And um, as ABB, we have been uh, there since second uh, industrial revolution. And uh, by the way, he also showed a picture of uh, fourth industrial revolution where there was a robot, ABB robot. So, uh, we are into power, uh, energy, uh, industrial automation, robotics and digitalization. And uh, so, the robot you saw there that was a conventional robot, manufacturing robot and the one you see here is a collaborative robot again used for manufacturing. It is called Yumi, I uh, will come to that what it is. Uh, before I get into the details, I will just give you a very um, quick uh, picture of what is happening in the industrial utility and infrastructure world. And uh, the context of course, so many of you are from the software technology domain, uh, but these are application areas uh, uh, moving very fast. And in fact, if you see the, the energy, the utility domain, so lot of technologies today what we see they have been there in the utility domain since 90s, 80s. You talk about expert system, talk about artificial intelligence, you talk about parallel processing. Uh, they have been there because the utility systems are very complex. They had to be, so I myself 30 years back when I was doing my masters, I was simulating the entire grid, digital simulation of the grid. So, uh, today if you see these uh, utilities, they are going through transformation, uh, shifting to renewables from the fossil fuel power to renewable having grid, smart grid, uh, smart distribution systems. Uh, digital grid we call it energy internet. So, how you transact energy through internet of course, the power cannot be uh, you know uh, transmitted through internet, but the transaction. Uh, when it comes to industry, it is uh, industry 4.0 we, we talked about my previous speaker talked about fourth industrial revolution and uh, collaborative flexible manufacturing in the industries whether it is a process plant, discrete manufacturing. Uh, real time optimization, so how do you optimize your production in real time, getting the data, applying different logics, different algorithms to optimize. And uh, coming to the transport infrastructure, we have smart cities as you know, uh, all over the world of course, in India also especially with 100 smart cities, it is growing also the numbers. Uh, electric mobility is uh, you know going in a very strong way that how we can use the power, electric power for the electric vehicles, uh, cars, uh, two wheelers, buses and the mobility as a service. So, the reason I am saying here is that although these uh, technologies have been there for many years, I think digitalization is one which is sort of cutting across all these three uh, domains. And when it comes to digitalization in industry, I will give you a very simple example, my favorite example how uh, it has gone through. So, uh, Motors, you have seen all motors in different uh, either home or factory or uh, infrastructure or utility. So, this is a electromechanical equipment. So, it used to be you know it is there for 100 years I mean from second uh, industrial revolution. So, uh, it is electromechanical equipment where it is data operation data maintenance data it has been always you know kept long back you know with files with uh, you know log books. So, then we moved it to digitalization, digitalized or digitized the data of this motor, the operation, uh, operational parameters of the motor design and maintenance records. Today, we have uh, this, these motors uh, with smart sensors, smart sensors which are not uh, put inside the motor. Of course, the, we have motors where a lot of sophisticated sensors they are put inside the motor, but today we have very simple way of putting the sensor on top of the motor. The motor can be very old and you do not have to stop the motor, you just put the sensor. And you connect this uh, sensors to the cloud through a gateway or through your smartphone and you get the real time data of the motor. 
and then you can optimize. You can get them, get the data, get the operational, uh, you know, uh, insights of the motor uh, on your mobile phone tab or desktop. So why do we do it? It's basically to improve the KPI, key performance indicators of the motor or the plant. So this, this particular uh, digitalization of motor can give you an uh, increase of energy efficiency by 10 percent. That means you can reduce your energy bill by 10 percent. The motors are the ones where you know 30 percent of the industrial energy consumption, 30 to 40 or even 50 percent uh, they are by the motors. You can imagine by, by reducing the energy consumption you can reduce the energy bill. It can extend the lifetime of the motor by 30 percent with this digitalization with digitalization application. You can also uh, extend, you can reduce the downtime of the motor by 70 percent. So very clearly the improvement in KPIs you can achieve and this is what the digitalization we mean. So there are many examples of industrial equipment, sensors, actuators, controllers where we apply this and then we get the benefit in the industry, in the utility, in the infrastructure. So coming to a very complex example, so this is a you can say on-prem real-time control systems in a plant. It can be in a factory, it can be a process plant, it can be a refinery, it can be a steel plant, uh, it, it is a paper mill maybe, it is a cement mill and although they, the plants they look very uh, conventional, trivial, but then there are a lot of sophisticated applications running in that. So there are hundreds of different sensors. And this kind of system has been there for several decades. We call it intranet of things, uh, distributed control system, closed loop control system you can say. So uh, hundreds of different sensors, actuators, controllers, they are connected to the system. There are a lot of servers, there are a lot of uh, display systems, there are a lot of HMI, there are a lot of uh, different devices, handheld devices where you can access the real time operation of the system. A lot of sophisticated al algorithms running there to optimize the process because it is not just a very transactional kind of system where uh, everything you know whether it is a chemical process or whatever you have a, a physics, physical model or physics model or uh, first principle model behind it which has been proven uh, for years. And there are different communication technologies, communication protocols, there are 10s and 20s different protocols how they can talk to each other, the devices, the actuators, the objects and it is because this kind of system which is a sort of set of connected sensors, actuators, controllers, uh, they have to be available for 99.99%. So that kind of and then this system has to be run for 22 years for example without any shutdown. If there is a fault in the system there is some uh, malfunction, it has to be self healing, it has to be uh, a fail safe, fault tolerant, so that kind of system. So the software which goes into this whether it is embedded or on the server or, the, or in the controller um, or even today we are talking about connecting this to cloud, so they have to be very very deterministic. So this kind of system has been there, but if you see this is a combination of software, platform and infrastructure. Of course on, on prem this kind of system, but if you see today how we are moving. So this we are also the sensors, actuators, controllers we are also connecting to the cloud in parallel, not really replacing the closed loop control system which is there in the plant because that gives us the 99 percent reliability, availability and also determinism that cannot be replaced by the internet of things or internet of things or, or uh, digitalization. So what we are doing is we are taking the data to the cloud and combining this data with different other data, weather forecast data, market demand, uh, user behavior, all these things taking into care and also accessing this from different locations um, globally or, or locally or in, in, a, in a country. And uh, also this data is accessed by different stakeholders, suppliers and experts, process experts, technology experts, basically to improve the business KPIs. 
The KPIs I talked about in a, a case of a motor is downtime, reducing the downtime, improving the energy efficiency and extending the life of the asset. There are so many other KPIs we can address through this. And of course, we use different technologies, digitalization technologies, predictive man maintenance, asset performance management, user experience, AI, ML. So, these are the technologies we use to achieve this. So, this is in addition to what is already there as a closed loop real time control system. So, these are the technologies we use. So, whether it is AR, VR, software defined machines, the, the, the Yumi you see the robot, it is basically the operation of it is defined by the software. Machine learning, so I think uh, in the previous session people have talked about it. Time sensitive networking, a lot of things are actually happening in millisecond, one thousandth of second. So, you need to have a network of all these objects, uh, sensors, actuators, controllers in, in, the, in the unit of millisecond, sometimes microsecond also. Big data, blockchain is coming into industrial applications for the energy uh, transaction for the uh, supply chain. 5G is coming which can be also taking a very uh, you know important role in the industrial automation because that can provide more uh, reliability and availability. And uh, inexpensive computing, the sensor you saw the, in the motor that used to be very expensive. We have a lot of sophisticated sensor system which is sometimes uh, more costlier than the equipment itself. But today we have this very inexpensive sensors available which can be used for this kind of application. And of course, uh, finally, uh, cyber security with all this, uh, we need to be cyber secure because uh, any small incident, cyber security incident in, in industrial automation can lead to uh, disaster. It can lead to, you know, very uh, hazardous gas emanating from a power plant or a chemical plant refinery. Uh, it can lead to a lot of uh, financial uh, damage, lead to damage of production in a continuous process plant. So, and also lead to human uh, safety uh, issues. So, that is why cyber security is very important all with in addition to all these technologies. So, this is one example of uh, how the distribution, the energy distribution system is getting, of course, it there has been, they have been already uh, there connected, but how also consumers they are connected because today we are talking about renewable energy, solar energy, energy and we are talking about wind energy, we are also talking about lot of uh, automation in the buildings, in the home. So, everything is now connected including the plant where the power is generated and also we are talking about electric vehicles. So, the charging of those vehicles they are also part of the ecosystem. So, here in addition to the utility distribution automation system, we also connect them to the cloud to analyze the data and improve the performance of the system and also provide more uh, you know better experience for the consumers, for the users. So, I talked about uh, electric vehicle charging. So, uh, earlier it used to be that uh, you have to charge your vehicle for 8 hours you know overnight probably. So, today we have chargers as ABB we make electric vehicle chargers. So, uh, in 8 minutes you can charge a vehicle for 200 kilometers, so very fast ultra fast charger. You can also have a bus which can be charged as a top up charge electric bus for 20 seconds when it is stopping near a bus stop. So, it can go and connect to the catenary system where it can get the charging. So, it does not have to go back to the depot every time to get charged. So, this kind of fast charging ultra we call it flash charging in, in case of bus. And uh, not only this, these are again connected the charging system because you need to know as user where do I you know take my car to charge and because it, it will take 8 minutes or maybe I will charge it for 4 minutes or whatever. So, you need to know the entire ecosystem is again uh, developed where you get all this uh, information online. So, this is like infrastructure uh, which is you know of course, with a platform and uh, the services can be provided. Uh, to the consumers, to the car uh, drivers, to the bus uh, drivers. So, this is what we have, I mean this is again combination of software, platform, infrastructure and uh, the service model is evolving with this. 
coming to the sea. So, uh, we have a uh, lot of as you know, you know the, the vessels, the ships they are used for cargo, for passenger, for uh, other purpose. So, we also have uh, integrated automation system with, uh, inside a ship which is like you know small uh, town you can say and uh, it has got all the uh, home automation, building automation and power automation inside. So, they are connected, but not only that, so when the ship is uh, sailing through different parts of the world. Uh, maybe in the North Pole or the South Pole where the ice is frozen or uh, the sea is frozen and it has to break the ice, the ship has to break the ice to sail and it needs a lot of uh, you know energy and a lot of power diesel to do that. So, how do you you know track these ships and then optimize the route so that it can consume less uh, fuel, less energy and uh, also the route and to move to, to reach to the destination faster. So, all these things can are optimized using the satellite communication monitoring the ships, the movement of the ships, the consumption of the energy in the ship and also the, the time to reach the destination. So, I talked about robots. Uh, so, as ABB we have been making robots since 1960s uh, uh, industrial robots and uh, so these robots were they are used in manufacturing and especially in lot of uh, almost all the automotive manufacturing, the cars you drive, the, the, it is painted, it is welded by the robots. And uh, from there we have also come to a stage where we have started using robots for different dif difficult tasks. So, there is a big uh, you know large machine, there is some problem. So, you need to inspect. So, you need to, uh, normally you have to open the machine, but here we have a robot which can crawl into a 10 mm gap in the machine and then do the inspection, you can do it remotely. Also there are robots which can uh, get inside a tank. So, normally in the refinery and all you have lot of chemicals oil there in the tank and you need to do inspection and there are lot of uh, machines, actuators, sensors inside the tank. So, uh, without evacuating the tank, uh, you can also send the robot and it goes and that does the inspection. So, these are the robots we already have. So, these are again creating sort of uh, software and platform as service. So, the these robots they are not bought by the you know consumers or customers B2 basically B2B B2. and whereas the top robots they are actually bought by the B2B companies the, the consumers the customers. But today we have robots which are as talked about collaborative robot. So, this is the robot which can work alongside a human being it has got lot of sophisticated sensors it can detect the human behavior actions and then uh, protect provide safety also to the human because the robot arms they are very heavy and all. So, earlier the industrial robots they were basically put in the uh, caged environment to avoid any safety issue. And these robots today they are also monitored remotely. For example, we are monitoring a robot in Bangalore uh, which are you know basically we have the center here remote center which is monitoring robot placed in different factories all over the world, factories of BMW, of Ford, uh, of Merck. So, these are the you know companies which are using robot for painting, welding of the vehicles. So, they are monitored from here. So, here again it is providing you know another opportunity where it can be provided as a service, the platform, the, the infrastructure. So, there are also applications where we are using uh, before setting up a factory or plant or big you know manufacturing um, uh, facilities. So, uh, the entire thing is simulated with virtual reality before actually the machines the, the plant is uh, built. So, this helps us to reduce the time and also do it first right first time. Virtual reality is also used to configure the robots which are placed in different plants across the globe. So, no need to travel to that location the robot can be there, but experts can actually um, uh, engineer it, configure it remotely using virtual reality and see how it is behaving. So, this is another application where uh, the paint quality you see today in uh, uh, you know automobile and vehicles in all cars, they are very high quality. So, they are not as I said they are not manually painted, they are painted by robot and with very sophisticated technology it is called uh, atomizer. 
so where the paint is actually put in terms of molecules and then it is spread on the car and it is done by the robot. So, this, this robot has actually different sophisticated sensors, vibration, gyro, temperature and it has got you know different communication RFID and then uh, basically there are also sophisticated algorithm running which control the quality of the paint, the consumption of the paint, the, the other chemical and uh, uh, water or whatever required. So, they basically optimize it. So, this is another example of how these uh, equipment with software they are getting into the platform and also service where uh, you know the, the, the supplier can be paid by quality of the paints. So, example of digital twins uh, we are using today um, how we can uh, you know monitor any equipment asset uh, in terms of its design parameters and then see if there are some deviations and how to correct them. Augmented reality again to troubleshoot any machines or uh, see what is there inside so that you can quickly configure or operate a machine. So, this is another area where we use. Uh, so, uh, for the assets, industrial assets we also have something called asset health model. So, here we use the asset health model to uh, improve its life to reduce its downtime as I talked about improve the energy efficiency also. And what we do is we take the data of the asset from the design parameters from the design sheets from the from the from the simulation model. We also take the data from control systems where it is connected as a system. We also put additional sensors the example you saw in the motor. So, all these things they are taken and then there is a model which is built for individual asset uh, for the type and also for the specific application. So, this, these models they are again uh, sort of modified based on how the asset is performing in a particular system. And here we also use uh, machine learning artificial intelligence because this can run continuously and then improve the performance of the asset without human intervention. And all this we do for of course, uh, detecting any anomalies, predicting any failures and also uh, having the spare part uh, available for these assets so that the downtime can be reduced. So, all this uh, in industry what we do whether it is automation or robotics or digitalization it is always uh, for improving key performance indicators KPIs of a particular operation plant in real time. So, KPIs like productivity, energy, quality, asset, health, reliability, safety. So, these are the ones which are improved by using the digitalization. Um, again, today the industry is moving towards how these KPIs can be measured and guaranteed by the uh, provider of the software platform or infrastructure. And then there is a you know business model um, by which it can be recovered also. So, one example of how uh, all these different technologies can be used in different way uh, right from the CEO or CEO level of a company or factory or operation or plant to the, the technical experts who can analyze any issue in a plant or asset or process. So, you see a sort of you know view of in real time view of different plants, different systems, industries working and then what are the KPIs, real time KPIs of those industry. So, if there are any issue, if there is any asset or any plant which has got any failure, you can drill down, drill down to the plant where ex exactly what has happened, get into the different assets, see where which is red, which is you know green, which is yellow in real time, uh, get further into the individual asset which has failed for, for example, is a motor which has failed and then you get also how the motor has been connected with different equipment there in real time. Then you also analyze the motor performance, different parameters using the smart sensor. Then you also get into the digital twin. If you want to do further analysis of the motor. Uh, so, this digital twin is again available uh, online. So, you do that you also uh, see the asset health model of the motor and then see what is the index whether it has failed or it is basically uh, going to fail uh, in few weeks, few days, 
few months or it is running healthy. So, so these the entire thing if you see it is all different software used, embedded software, software on the edge, software in the server, PC, software on the cloud. It is a combination of all which is giving you a seamless flow from a COO view to a technician to a technical expert view in real time. Um, today if you see in our domain, I mean in robotics we have been there uh, several decades and uh, so the initially it was the robots which were programmed, we have to write a program what robot has to do in the plant, in the factory. And today we have robot, for example the one you saw, you me and our other uh, some more robots where uh, they can be taught, basically you have to uh, you know take hold their hand and then show what, what has to be done. So, by that the program will be generated. But we are also working for tomorrow's uh, programming of robot where it is the robot which will be learning, self learning of the robot. Robot will just observe what is happening in the, in the factory or manufacturing or the plant and it will le learn by itself and then start acting in the same way. So, basically it is a application of machine learning artificial intelligence which robot is getting. For us I think uh, it is not just the artificial intelligence or machine learning, it is also the human learning plus machine learning together uh, which is very important because uh, it does not happen just by programming, just by developing a software, a lot of domain knowledge experience which comes from the operation and there are people, there are experts who can contribute to that. So, it is for us it is augmented lear learning which is very important um, and then that can actually uh, lead this industry utility or infrastructure from automated operation to digitalized operation to autonomous. Of course, it will not be that fully automated autonomous the way we see that cars of course, it is evolving, but in a plant which is very very complex unlike a car or vehicle. Uh, there are different type of 100 different types of sensors, actuators, controllers working and there are a lot of different processes, chemical process, mechanical, electrical process running and uh, it cannot be 100 percent autonomous, but uh, definitely we are moving towards that some part of it which will be autonomous, but some part will be definitely needing hum human intervention. So, this is what you see that how in the from from second uh, industrial revolution to fourth we are moving and then fifth will be autonomous operation. So, uh, this industrial uh, you can say IOT or industry 4.0 fourth industrial revolution is not a destination for us for, for everybody in the industry. It is a journey and it has to be done continuously. So, if you see you take any plant whether it is a new plant or old plant you start with you know defining the KPIs what you would like to achieve and then you do the assessment, you install different sensors, actuators, control system, automation, robotics and then you monitor and then again you do the assessment, again redefine your KPIs. It is a continuous process and in this process there are a whole lot of uh, software, whole lot of platform, infrastructure they are involved. And uh, today if you see many of the customers, uh, the consumers, uh, the end users, they do not have bandwidth in terms of financial bandwidth or even technology or knowledge bandwidth to really do all these things in a continuous way. Uh, and also at the same time achieve uh, the goal, the KPIs which are basically complex and availability is 99.9 .9 percent of the system. Which including all different sensors, actuators, software, platform and infrastructure and uh, different type of domains you have. So, it is all I think moving towards how do we converge with all these uh, technologies achieving the key performance indicators and having a business model which is based on SaaS, you know anything here can be a service whether it is a software or it can be an infrastructure or platform. Um, 
So very, very uh, interesting time we are in with lot of digitalized technology, digitalization technology coming in and also uh, the economy, the transformation in industry, in energy and also in the, uh, you know, social domain. And uh, so it is evolving, so I would say a whole lot of opportunities for SaaS for it, for to be applied in this domain in industrial automation, robotics and digitalization. So thank you all. So any questions or So, APP is very heavily invested in the car manufacture uh, industry. Sorry? APP is very heavily invested in the car manufacturing industry, as you mentioned. How far away are we from just in time manufacture of cars? Let us say I want to. No, we are not into car manufacturing. Okay, but you produce robots, right? Robots, yeah. Do that. Yeah, which okay. manufacture the cars? Sure. Okay. In your, yeah. in your assessment, how far are we from just in time manufacture of cars? Let us say I can customize my car using a checkbox uh, list and say create this for me and then that places an order to whichever company I choose and it creates a custom car for me. Okay. Uh, this is again, a it is not a destination, it is a journey. I think uh, uh, as ABB we of course provide the machines, the automation, the robot for the manufacturer of the cars like BMW, Ford and uh, Merck and all. Uh, I think uh, many of these companies they are using this real time optimization with robot with changing actually uh, as I talked about the robot uh, the uh, it can be taught instead of programming because earlier it used to be you know you have to program because you have a new uh, car new um, uh, variation model of the car you have to manufacture then you have to you know design uh, or sorry reconfigure the robot the operation the machines everything. But today with software it is done very quickly, I would say definitely it has improved by 80-90% that you can, they can do it faster. By reconfiguring the same assembly line, the robot, the same machines, the same automation and uh, through the software and then they, they, it, it starts making your customized car, yeah. I would, I would say, I mean it, it, it is, uh, again it is a sort of, you know, uh, not destination, it is a journey. I think it is more and more because as we move, we will have more and more customization required and user experience to be brought in there. So, yeah. But do you see your customers asking for this capability and ABB looking to pr uh, provide this kind of capability as, uh, as yes. sort of a standard? Yeah, yeah. It is basically they do ask how fast they can uh, configure the robot to do a different operation. So, it can be done in minutes or uh, hour or days depending on how they want to change their assembly line for a just in time production of customized cars, yes, we are seeing that. Yeah. <coughs> Any other? So uh, hi, this is Amar here. So uh, going forward, uh, the, do you see that AI will completely automate, like there will be no human labor involved going forward, like machines automatically with robots, they can create things once the design is uh, validated. So do you feel that is uh, like uh, the outcome of industry 4.0, like a human free uh, factory or a human free industry? Mm -hmm. No human labor. So, what is your take on this? Okay, uh, the trivial tasks, yes, it can be actually, uh, uh, you know, replaced by artificial intelligence. Uh, but a lot of in industry, the, the lot of tasks are not trivial, not one, you know, stand alone transactional. They are, let us say, if you have one sensor or actuator or a controller, this, this is uh, maybe these are one among hundreds or thousands in a plant and they are all connected and uh, they have to work in tandem with all the sensors, controllers in millisecond term and then there is an algorithm running, you know, a very sophisticated algorithm running to optimize the process. Uh, so artificial intelligence 
in some areas it can actually play a role, but not all. I think uh, as we still need, as I talked about, it's augmented learning, not machine learning, augmented learning, both human being and uh, the machine, both robot or whatever automation system, they have to work together. Uh, so to be, to be practical, I think it's not that you will have fully uh, automated, fully autonomous plant without any human being. That is not possible. Yeah. And uh, one more question is uh, this 3D printing is like it is going through the hype cycle. Yeah. So, do you feel that uh, going forward 3D printing will print all the parts whatever manufacturing does and I mean, so what is your take on 3D printing? Going okay. Forward, 3D right. This is a good question. So, I think 3D printing is more for uh, we are talking about customization for example. So, there 3D printing will really uh, take a you know very important role because you need to customize your car, the look or the door or the inside or whatever. Uh, 3D printing is not for mass scale production because it, it goes you have to do it sequentially yeah each machine each 3D printing machine has to do. Uh, whereas, in, in the ma mass scale you have forging you have all those you know that, that traditional conventional technology will be still there. And uh, 3D printing will also help in uh, service for example, if you have a breakdown of a you know car and uh, you have special you made it very special uh, you know then you need to have that uh, part available spare part. So, the 3D printing can be used to you know make that uh, spare part very quickly instead of you know looking at where it is available not available and all those yeah. So, it is very I, I can say that for the customized kind of uh, application yeah. So, coming back to the your question of uh, whether artificial intelligence will you know replace the human being and nobody will be there. I think uh, people always say that uh, automation is going to replace uh, you know human being uh, and jobs also will go away and uh, if you see today I mean in the world where which is the reason which is having most unemployment. Africa right for example and how much of uh, automation is there nil. So, it is not uh, basically uh, related you can't you can't say that if we have more automation then we will have you know less job. So, no automation no job that is also there. So, I think we need to probably the workforce uh, whether we are working in a factory or uh, software development or technology or service provider we need to um, you know move to another area it is we call it you know not job replacement, but job displacement here. So, it will be the jobs people will be displaced to do another kind of job. So, all these artificial engine machine learning we are talking about I think somebody has to really develop that right, right? that that software which will write a, a algorithm software. Uh, in real time somebody some human being also has to write that. So, so it is only moving to that uh, space new kind of yeah ok. So, any thank you very much it was uh, I really enjoyed.